Hello, everyone. The Flurf Troop I mentioned on Twitter decided to fully respond to my Lord Jamar debunk, so it's time to eat these guys lunch. Bit of background. These people attempted to respond to my Lord Jamar video once before, but their live stream went off the rails. This is precisely why it's better to make videos and not live streams on this type of thing, but I digress. I made a series of comments on that video where Flatzoid and I had a bit of a correspondence. He asked for a debate. I politely declined. So now this is his second attempt at a rebuttal to my Lord Jamar video. Now in this video, we're just going to respond to the bit about the comment I left on his channel as these flurfs almost without fail run two plus hour live streams as a form of response. So we can't waste any time here. By the time this video uploads, I will be in Japan enjoying my life. I can make a response to the full live stream at a later date, but like I said, I'm in Japan enjoying my life without any further ado. So anyway, the Birdman guys, he commented back on a thread on the last stream. And uh, I wanted to just show you guys to go through it to make you. I don't know. He's not. He's not showing that he's any better than any other anti flat earth out there. And it's sad because you think someone with 247k subscribers would be a bit more. Not bigoted. I would say. There's so much wrong with this nonsense that I don't know where to even begin. Debunking flat earth and not taking the dumbest conspiracy on the internet seriously is bigoted now. This reminds me of that one guy with the cashmere do-rag I responded to earlier and that these people truly believe they're being persecuted and that their stupidity should be a protected class that no one should be able to respond to or joke about. And I'm not sure what subscriber count has to do with bigotry, but there are plenty of bigoted YouTubers out there. I recently made a video on one of them. You should check it out. That he starts off with, I find it hilarious about this is that I it immediately went off the rails. Good job. Good effort, lol. I agreed. It did go off the rails because you got people coming in, which I didn't expect. But I, I found that more entertaining than the Birdman's not a debunk, to be honest. Because you've heard those arguments over and over. You guys would agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was all over the place, stream I admit. Would you... And myself be able to have a normal conversation sometime, no distractions. I think that's quite a normal thing to ask, correct? This is his reply. Yes, it is. Writing a whole essay. Okay, he writes a lot of essays, by the way. I think it's pretty funny that you're about to go on a rant about me declining to speak with you right after balking at me writing essays. I would think that me taking the time to answer your question with a thoughtful and thorough response would be something you appreciated. But then again, you're an anti-intellectual, so this isn't that surprising. I can't say that I'm interested. For one, I'm not a debate, bro. I know you're not a debate. People debate. You don't, you are not a debate. <laughs> Flatzoid, I'm not calling you bro there, genius. How have you spent five years on this platform and have never heard of the term debate bro? I guess we can all see the level of intellect we're dealing with here and precisely where this video is heading. I'm a videographer. Me too. I make video essays. Well done. And rebuttal videos. Debates. And let's not kid ourselves. This is what you mean by conversation. Our exercises in who can present themselves as most articulate and charismatic. I would be remiss if I didn't take the time to point out the irony of this current situation. Clearly, Flatzoid was the person that dreaded reading aloud in class, as he's reading my words like a person with a second grade reading ability. If I were a cynical man, I would point out that this is why he wouldn't last in a debate with me, because as I stated, debates are about who is more charismatic and articulate. And, well... Not about who is presenting actual evidence. I mean, I spoke about the Cavendish experiment and you blatantly stated it's not even a hypothesis. <laughs> Showing that you don't know what a hypothesis even is. So we wouldn't even be speaking to each other, but past one another. I don't find value in that type of conversation and I'm a very busy individual. Oh my word. Okay, based on that alone, I'm going to have to clearly tell him, no, 
the science, ex I mean, the Cavendish experiment is not a hypothesis. An no. experiment and a hypothesis are two different things. <clears throat> okay, the hypothesis is what predicts what will happen in the experiment. The experiment is what is testing to see if the hypothesis is correct. Yeah. So I know it's by terms, this guy doesn't know what the difference between hypothesis and experiment is. I would like to remind everyone that this is the second attempt at a response to my video. In the first video, Flatzoid said this. However, what we do know about gravity is that it exists. Henry Cavendish performed an experiment. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, I missed that Cavendish again. Oh, oh. crap in the dish. Notice how they, I notice every time they talk about Cavendish as a quote-unquote experiment, they don't show Cavendish himself. They take people trying to recreate it and usually fail. And mm -hmm. note it's not an actual experiment because mm -hmm. there is no scientific hypothesis no. for it. Because Cavendish was not an experiment. It was a calculation based on trying to measure Earth's mean density. That was it. It was not got to do with proving gravity as a force or a constant. We've been through oh, this many yeah. times, and I don't think we're going to go through it again. We, we're trying to go through the video. Not yeah. trying to explain to you again how Cavendish is not a science. No, no, no it's I crap mean, in a comment, dish. Pronounce that. Yeah, crap in a dish. I agree. I agree. So you see, he's the one that said the Cavendish experiment is not even a hypothesis. He's arguing against himself here. All I did was restate his own stated position back to him, and now he's arguing against a straw man, suggesting that I'm calling an experiment a hypothesis. No, I posted Cavendish's experiment in my video to demonstrate that we can measure the gravitational constant. That's the hypothesis, that things exhibit a gravitational pull, and we can measure that gravitational pull to estimate the mass of the Earth. And the experiment proved it definitively. It is replicable, and students and researchers do it all the time. Either this man is cognitively impaired, or he's brazenly dishonest. Maybe even a little bit of both. And Cavendish has no scientific hypothesis because they don't have an actual cause for an effect. So, so it's not a scientific hypothesis to call it an experiment. It was a demonstration trying to uh, calculate Earth's mean density. What? I'm not sure what Flatzoid thinks he's saying here, but this is, of course, entirely wrong. John Mitchell's torsion balance apparatus was the basis for the Cavendish experiment. Mitchell, an astronomer and geologist, invented the apparatus in 1783 to measure the Earth's mass. Unfortunately, John died before he could complete the experiment, so Henry Cavendish performed the experiment in his stead. The original goal of Mitchell's experiment was to estimate the mass of the Earth. Here's the important part, Flatzoid, so listen up. Mitchell's hypothesis was that based on Newton's law of universal gravitation, which states the force between two objects depends on their masses and the distance between them, he could calculate the mass of the Earth by finding out the gravitational attraction of the Earth through measuring the attraction between two smaller masses and then scaling that up to the Earth. That's the hypothesis and the entire reason for the existence of the experiment. Upon conducting the experiment, Cavendish was able to figure out G, or the gravitational constant, that, which applied to any object, can tell us the amount of gravitational attraction two objects will have. By proving that there is a gravitational constant, this tells us that gravity, in fact, does exist. So yes, there's definitely a difference between how we would communicate with this because the guy blatantly is ignorant to the subject. This is pretty rich coming from a flat earther that can barely read and separated bro from debate bro. These guys are all the same. Mm. Okay. They too chicken shit to just stand up for what they believe in. They want to poke a bear, but mm -hmm. as soon as the bear stands up, they want to run for the hills. That's right. That's right. And I, I find that very, um, very cowardish. This comment is devoid of any type of reality. First of all, I don't even know you. You poked me, not the other way around. I made a video on Lord Jamar on Godfrey's podcast, not 
Flatzoid's perspective. I was made aware of your goofy side of the internet by an audience member because people love making me aware of when there were people making videos on me. So I decided to take a look, and the only thing I said was that your live stream went off the rails, which it did, and you agreed. You then asked me for a debate, and I told you that I don't take your position seriously and that I'm not a debate bro. How is that poking the bear? You are not a bear. You're not even Winnie the Pooh. This video has less than 700 views in seven days. I'm sorry, there's nothing frightening about you people. On every single one of your videos, you have community notes attached to them because your position is ridiculous and archaic, so YouTube has to dunk on your worldview every single time. What you wanted was for me to platform you, to give credence to your ridiculous worldview, and I, very politely, declined. Now you're here shit-talking me when I never did that to you. So now you're about to see what a real poked bear looks like. Gloves are off now. Moreover, looking at your behavior you demonstrate in this video, it wouldn't make for a good conversation in the first place. You literally couldn't make it five minutes into the video without pausing to add incorrect and irrelevant... Irrelevant? Com to, uh, ...commentary. First of all, we have to pause it every now and then because it's called fair I'm, use. I'm Otherwise, it's copyright strike, okay? No, you don't have to do that. Do you see how you just paused before you even finished my written sentence? That's exactly what I'm talking about. How you stop me before I finish a thought. I have no problem with pausing to respond to something. I'm very open about the usage of my content. The point being made there was that you guys were off topic in that first video. You guys literally went on a tangent about my channel's mascot and avatar as if that had anything to do with what I was saying. This is why your first live stream failed. You're disorganized. This is why I prefer making videos to debating, especially nimrods like you that fly off on irrelevant tangents and cut me off before I can complete a thought. In a video, I can say all that I need to say without interruption. And secondly, I didn't give incorrect or in irrelevant commentary, did I? Yeah, you did. Aside from the aforementioned tangent you went on about my avatar, why do you think you guys didn't have time to address my entire video the first time? You used a horrible AI thumbnail for a live stream that was supposed to be all about me, and that completely failed because someone jingled keys and you got distracted, you little puppy. By definition, that was irrelevant to the topic of the live stream, which I remind you, was me. Hell, you guys literally just did it again in this video, where one of you got distracted by the Robinson Foundry thumbnail on the right, and that prompted yet another side tangent. Agreed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you see that picture with the guy with the copper-looking sphere inside that hexagon? Huge magnetic copper sphere, yeah? Yeah, I'm sorry. Even getting my channel's av avatar completely wrong. How did I get it wrong? Uh, last time I checked, it definitely is blank, is it not? Let's open yes, it. it. Share. It's, it's that's his. That's yeah. his avatar, correct? That's blank, dude. That's blank guy. Huh? Yeah. So, because I created a 3D image blanker that looks better than that one, by the way, mm, it's, yeah, I got it wrong. This is amazing. He thinks this ghoulish AI abomination is better than official Capcom artwork. This should tell you the level of delusion on this guy. Not to mention the complete and utter lack of comprehension he demonstrates. For reference, I'm talking about how these fools spoke about my avatar for three minutes where they didn't know that my main avatar is official Capcom artwork from the game. They said that I'm using a fake image to avoid copyright claims from Capcom, that the colors are off, and in that same tangent said that Lord Jamar was from Wu-Tang. These people are hapless, brainless idiots, basically. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry, but mine looks better than that. But does he say he was, it's not Blanca? Is that what he said? No, he says I got it wrong. How? You got it wrong. You get it wrong. Bloody oh I see. oh you mean oh you mean the one on your thumbnail I see I see I see. What's wrong with my thumbnail? 
Nothing's wrong with it when your thumbnail is better than this. <laughs> I let that play a while to show you just how clueless these people are. Notice how I literally told him I'm referring to the tangent they went on in the previous video and how they somehow think I'm referring to the thumbnail that was used. Flurfs, ladies and gentlemen. But that just tells you he's got nothing to really moan about. He's just trying to find anything wrong he can. Irony. You said I was a moron for not understanding vacuum cleaners, and I stick by that. When you literally you paused the video before I mentioned pressure differentials. Remember why I said that? He was insulting flat earthers by saying, you guys always think of a vacuum cleaner when you think of space. This is exactly what I'm talking about. He's doubling down on something he not only misheard, but never got to finish because that was the moment his live stream turned into a zoo. I was not making fun of flurfs in that moment, but describing a common misconception they have about the word vacuum. I talk to flurfs all the time, and the vast majority of them believe that the atmosphere should be sucked out into the vacuum of space. You know, like the guy I'm talking about in the video. Everything should be pulled into space, into the so-called vacuum of space if there's no covering. If we have no covering our atmosphere, our waters, everything should be sucked into so the... This is a larger problem with people on the internet as a whole. They'll hear a criticism of someone else, but because they also subscribe to the same or a similar belief, they'll internalize that criticism and take it personal, as if you were talking about them. If it doesn't apply to you, why are you so mad? I don't get upset when women talk about guys with micro penises. Is that not true? Yeah, yeah, He's calling you to be idiots. Mm, you're calling yourselves that when you profess a belief in flat earth. But I digress. I generally attempt to remain respectful in my rebuttal videos. I might tell a joke here or there, but I attempt to treat my subject with a modicum of respect. I'd much rather have to address criticism of my videos on the basis of the arguments I presented, opposed to my tone or perceived lack of respect. I think it's a bit Freudian on your part that you assumed I was calling flurfs idiots in that moment. I suppose you already know what you are. He says, like you completely misunderstood what I was saying with the vacuum thing, which is why you got corrected, but still tried to paint the part of the video you didn't get the full context of in negative light. This means you would do the same to me in a conversation where I wouldn't be able to get a full thought out. Yeah, not my style. First of all, a conversation and a debate are two different things, correct? There is a difference between a conversation and a debate. A conversation is usually to share ideas, learn from one another, and connect. Do you think I have anything to learn from you? What ideas could you possibly share? You don't even have a model, so you have nothing to offer me. Not to mention you repeatedly insulted me and attempted to infantilize my positions. And that's why you're actually asking for a debate. You're looking to challenge the idea of a globular Earth to put my positions to the test and to scrutinize my ability to talk about this topic. What the fuck else would we talk about? I don't know you. You don't know me. All we know about each other is that we have diametrically opposed positions on the shape of the earth. What is that, if not a debate? I saw how you treated dissenting opinions in that first live stream. That's why I mentioned your behavior. The second you received pushback, you and your silly goof troop dogpiled them for nearly two hours. Yeah, that's a debate. I used to debate. This is why I'm so good at formulating and defeating arguments. This is why I'm aware that I would run circles around you in a formal or informal debate. But I recognized early on that it's never about who is presenting actual facts, but about who is more interesting to listen to. Worse still, who has more fans, both of which I would bury you with. That doesn't interest me anymore, and that's why I've settled on video making as my form of argumentation. But I did write you a beautifully structured and thoughtful comment, and you insulted me again, instead of appreciating that I took the time to do so. So in other words, this guy's trying to make excuses not to talk to me. That's it. There is no, the guy doesn't know from a bar of soap, but he's trying to tell me what I would and not do. So he's divining my motives. Oh, I'm really calling him out. Come on the show, yeah. Birdman. We'll talk to you. So I do find this really cowardish and just it's just simple. Just say I don't want to have a conversation with you because 
I don't really know how I would defend myself because that's at the end of the day all it is. I hate that I have to say this. And I really mean it because, like I said, people tend to internalize a criticism of others as a dig at themselves. But I'm just going to come out and say it. Flatzoid, you are a nobody. Not in the sense that I'm a somebody, but in the sense that you figuratively are a nobody. No one takes anything you say seriously. You're not a spokesperson for Flat Earth. Hell, I'm more popular on this platform than Mark Sargent, one of the leaders of the Flurf movement, who also commented on the Lord Jamar video I made. That is to say, you positioning our interaction as me being afraid to talk to you is insane levels of copium. Brother, I'm about to make you more seen than you ever have been simply by responding to you, which is what you wanted all along. What I'm saying is, you want an interaction with me. You need it. I gain nothing from talking to you. I have heard every argument from Flat Earthers. You people are dumb. I think we have demonstrated that when you were talking about my avatar. Twice, by the way. I'm not afraid of talking to you. I don't want to talk to you. That's the difference. You inserted yourself into a situation that never involved you. What fucking right do you have to claim that I'm running from a conversation with you? Who are you? Secondly, perhaps more importantly, I don't entertain conspiracy theorists and science deniers. See what I'm saying? Since when are we science deniers, guys? The second you decided to argue the earth is flat with all of those supporting arguments you make as they are contrary to geology, astronomy, seismology, fluid dynamics, physics, general relativity, the list goes on. You literally believe gravity isn't real. Scientific consensus is that gravity is real. Scientific consensus is also that the earth is a sphere. By definition, you deny all this science. See, you don't even realize you're a science denier, and you think a conversation with you would be valuable to me in any capacity? Are you stupid? You know what? I think I know the answer to that. But this is the same thing I hear all the time from these anti-flat earthers. You are just science deniers. <laughs> no, no, no. We are science realists. <laughs> No, my flat friend, there are two categories, people that accept the scientific consensus and those that reject it. There is no in between. There is just people that don't accept evidence and those who do. Science realist is an oxymoron. Science is already real. We can demonstrate science and that demonstration is replicable. You are a flat earther, a person that believes in an archaic idea that was disproved centuries ago. In order to maintain the integrity of being a flat earther, you deny objective reality. To call yourself a realist is disrespectful to that term. You guys claiming pseudoscience isn't science and we're calling you out for it. That's it. Yeah. We're the it, ones that like science because we don't want pseudoscience to be the thing. The absolute hubris with which you claim such a thing. I'm honestly appalled. Allow me to digress for a bit. One thing I've noticed about a lot of anti-intellectuals is that they attempt to use scientific terminology to debunk science. You'll hear them say silly things like astronomy is not science or that theories are not scientific. I've never seen someone use the nomenclature of a thing to discredit that thing the way you'll hear anti-intellectuals do it. This man just claimed that the science that scientists perform is pseudoscience. You know, a guy that can't get a YouTube channel off the ground and is doing nothing with his life besides trying to bait people into debates about flat earth. It would be funny if it weren't aggravating. Imagine a bicyclist telling a race car driver that they know nothing about driving cars. This is the equivalent of what this moron just said. The projection is off the charts. You know, it's really strange that until Parsons actually came along and really started pioneering into the field of rocketry, rockets to the space were just, oh, that's just science fiction. It's impossible. It can never take place. And in fact, they turned down a grant to, um, they laughed at him. They said, they said, no, there's no way. Once you get a rocket into space, then you don't have anything to push off of. And I thought that was funny as shit, you know, that they, but I, I think it had something to do with the occult connection to it because it definitely is uh, an occult belief system. It, it's a, or, 
You know what I'm saying? It's it's yeah. not. Uh, yeah, the heliocentrism is an occult belief system. It's based on Babylonian uh, beliefs. You cannot make this up. Flatty McGee here just said that they're the ones pushing real science while scientists are doing pseudoscience, and then he and his partner immediately go into a tangent about the occult. The pride of the stupid is a sight to behold. And he says, me debating you suggests that our positions are even more remotely, are even remotely equal. I do not respect your positions. Mm. He's just a bigot. Your persecution complex is showing flats. Not to mention this would by definition make you a bigot as well, as you deny the work of thousands of scientists and call people who have been to space liars. What is that if not bigotry? Science denial? Yeah, he says, I do not respect your position. So he's already showing he's a bigot. Yeah. He says, you aggravate me with your out of hand dismissal of thousands of people's live work with absolutely zero work to show for it on your own outside of struggling YouTube channels that barely attract even casual conspiracy theorists. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the jabs hurt when they have no choice but to laugh at themselves. Birdman. I've been doing a lot on this channel. You do know that we get censored and we don't get pushed out like you guys do. No, what's actually occurring is your grift is a dying one and people are no longer tuning in. Perhaps you got to the game a little too late as you joined in 2019, a year after a documentary exposed you all for the grifters and charlatans that you are. You are not being censored. You just don't make interesting content and are lying about settled science, an incredibly small niche. I mean, this video is a disorganized two hour live stream of five flurfs getting upset at facts. Who the hell wants to watch that? There are plenty of questionable YouTubers and grifters on this platform getting billions of views. Right-wing anti-woke losers dominate view counts with their inane and repetitive content, and actual bigotry would seem like something YouTube would want to actually censor if they're going about censoring things, right? Might I suggest a career change to the alt-right anti-woke grift? I can guarantee you I know more about science and anything this guy's been talking about than this Birdman idiot or whatever. And I'm going to call him an idiot now because he's been jabbing at us the whole time, calling mm -hmm. Flat Earth is stupid, Flat Earth is a science denies, Flat Earth is don't know what's going on. I have no doubt that you believe that you know more than me about science. You believe you know more than actual scientists. This is not surprising. But let's not pretend that you're only now insulting me as you did it before I ever spoke a word to you. And you wonder why I have no interest in granting you a debate. Conversation. The guy doesn't know me from a bar of soap, but wants to tell me I don't understand science. Wants to tell me I don't understand physics. Wants to tell me I don't understand this. But does he even know who I am? Nobody does. The reasons none of you are engineers, STEM professors, or performing science in labs, you're here to sow discord because of your ability to do math and understand scientific principles and experiments, that's all. Okay, first of all, people have different professions and jobs because if we were all the same people doing the same jobs, there would be no, there would be nothing. Imagine nobody was a farmer. You wouldn't be able to eat. Imagine nobody fixed cars. You wouldn't be able to commute. Imagine nobody built houses. You wouldn't be able to stay in a house. What if everybody did exactly the same job? We are not talking about everybody. We are talking about you. There's a tiny percentage of the population that are flurfs. If every single one of you disappeared, the round earth would keep rotating as if nothing ever happened and we would all go on with our lives. You are an insignificant part of the population. That is to say, if 100% of you people dedicated your lives to actually becoming scientists, we would still have farmers, auto mechanics, and carpenters. Nothing we get done last week. <laughs> We, we'd all be like at a stalemate. Nothing would ever happen. And secondly, just because we're a flat earther doesn't mean we've never finished school. Doesn't mean no one's become an engineer or studied science or studied engineering or physics or anything. Notice how I said these people don't actually perform science in labs. And he says, because we are flurfs, it doesn't mean we didn't go to school. See what I mean? talking past each other and the flurf 
attacking a straw man. This is what happens when he has my literal words on the screen. Imagine a debate. Conversation. The guy, is, the guy is doing a cliche of, you laugh at such a stupid because you're a conspiracy theorist. First of all, Flat Earth isn't a conspiracy theory. Just because you don't accept valid descriptors does not make them cease being accurate descriptions. You don't accept the reality of the shape of the earth. I am not surprised that you don't realize this is a conspiracy theory. You think every relevant scientist and space agency is lying to you. By definition, that's a conspiracy. What the fuck do you think a conspiracy theory is, dipshit? Oh, I believe it. Therefore, it's not a conspiracy theory. Yeah, and other stupid motherfuckers believe vaccines cause autism. Doesn't make it not a conspiracy theory. No one has yet to show me how Flat Earth is a conspiracy theory yet. No. Has they? No. They're just claiming it's a conspiracy theory. How have we conspired anything, guys? Oh, dear God. This fruitcake believes conspiracy refers to the person that believes in the conspiracy. I'm shocked. Stunned. These people continue to amaze me with the sheer depth of their ignorance. This comes off like an SNL sketch, but he's dead ass serious. Where has Flatter conspired? I think it's the other way around. I think they conspired to make a globe out of a flat earth. That's just my opinion, personally. So it's a. Uh... It, it, it's really actually infuriating when you get these bigots trying to claim this stuff. But I just laugh at them, though, because it is projection. I love how he gets corrected by his friend and he brushes right on past it like he didn't just say you put the peanut butter and jelly on the outside of the sandwich. Because I can guarantee you if I had to talk to this guy about physics and science, we know who would be the one understanding what's going on. Yeah, I think we do. It would be different if you people presented any models at all, but you don't because you can't as your explanations for empirically observable phenomena are all incongruous and that precisely why you don't have a working model and why you all immediately bulk at the joke model I placed in the beginning of this video. Your goal is to endlessly question reality instead of presenting a falsifiable model of your own and that is why we are not equal. You have something to attack while you give me nothing. Okay. This is going to be very plain and simple. If you made a claim, you have the burden of proof. If we were using that very simplistic take on the burden of proof, it would be you that has the burden, as your claim is that the earth is flat. You are not simply rejecting the globe. You are explicitly stating the earth is flat. It's in the title of your video, after all. Staying on this train of thought, scientists have proved beyond a shadow of doubt that the earth is spherical, with the mountains of videographic evidence, experiments, and observed phenomena. In other words, we have satisfied our burden you deny all that evidence, which brings me to the second part of this. A person making a negative claim also has the burden of proof. Go on, Google it if you have to. Negative claims can be rewritten into logically equivalent positive claims, meaning they satisfy the requirements for the burden of proof. The negative claim that you're making is that the Earth is not a spheroid. Okay, prove that claim. Provide for me a model of what you believe the Earth is since you claim it is not a spheroid. We have already provided a bevy of evidence and experiments one can do to even prove this to themselves, which of course you reject. So then, what is the shape of the Earth? After you tell me what the shape is, provide a model. That model must account for the day-night cycle, the seasons, eclipses, earthquakes, and tides, all at the same time. That is to say, you need to give me one model, not multiple models that may satisfy each of those observed phenomena. One model for all of those. The GLOBE model does this and has the ability to withstand experimental scrutiny as well as observations. You're up. It's not our duty to replace your falsified burden. You made a claim, back it up, or it's shown false. I don't need to go and replace that claim, do I? 
you do when you claim the provided evidence that you asked for is fake. That is a positive claim. That's how the logic works if you're invoking philosophy, which you are, so you are subject to the burden of proof for your claim. I'm also aware that you're attempting to weasel out of having to provide evidence for your flat earth, but no, we're going to hold your feet to the fire. I'm asking you for a model of what you, flat zoid, believe the earth to be. Your albeit tiny, audience should find your inability and unwillingness to answer my question concerning. I'm sure some of them, although themselves flat earthers, are also wondering what the actual shape is, if not spherical. So tell us. Countries exist, so draw them on a piece of paper. Paper's flat, so this should be easy. Next, draw the body of water that definitely exists and surrounds those countries. After you do that, show me where the sun and moon are and their orbits. The sun and moon must return to their positions and phases every 24 hours and 28 days, respectively. After you do this, explain how earthquakes work on this model and why they occur in the first place. And lastly, explain how tides work on this model. Seems you have your work cut out for you, Flurf. I suggest you get started. The other Flurfs are also waiting for explanations for these things, and you should be embarrassed for not having one should you run from this challenge. And the, the FE Core and a couple of other people have actually made a flat working model from what I can yeah. remember back in the day. He's, he's way behind. He's not been in this arena that long. Oh, goody, this supposed model that I'm way behind on should satisfy everything I asked for, yes? Please provide for me that model so that I may scrutinize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, there's flaws in both models, don't get me wrong. But, but uh, is there a globe model, by the way? <coughs> Not a working one. They got multiple models yeah, for with certain multiple. aspects. Textbook projection. There is one globe model in 2024. It accounts for all observed natural phenomena. That you don't understand these explanations is not the fault of the model. You guys have multiple models because flat earth does not match reality. So you have to have multiple models to fit your scientific illiterate explanations. Yep. Just like the flat earth has multiple models for certain aspects. And that's what I mean about projection. He knows his worldview has multiple incongruous models that don't all fit together. So his tactic is to pretend there are multiple globe models, which doesn't even make sense. This man is a charlatan and a blatant liar. It's, it's, it's not hard to understand. Any model that they actually present comes from a flat earth measurement. Citation needed. And that's where they always show their great circle routes is on the Mercator map. And it's like, okay, well, let's see your great circle routes for your north-south destinations. How come there's no great circle going north and south? What the hell's up with that? These people are so ignorant, it hurts. Quickly, a map that can be viewed on a phone or a computer screen will necessarily be some form of a flat projection because phones and computer screens are flat. This is why the Mercator is so popular. It is a useful approximation that can be shown on a flat screen or a wall map. We've actually been to space, guys. Even YouTubers are going these days. We've seen what the planet actually looks like. This map talk is irrelevant. He says, I'll be happy to make a video about the claims you make. Should you actually respond to my video with a falsifiable model? Let's start there. I'm entirely uninterested in your incessant questioning of reality. As all of your talking points have been heard and debunked before. And instead, I'm interested in that model you actually believe in. Until that time comes, you can consider this the last time you'll ever hear from me. <laughs> what a sweetheart, I'm telling you. Say anyway. it's not so, please. Oh, no. Imagine saying this after your hapless leader begged me multiple times to converse with him, is making multiple live streams about me, and another of your group literally asked me to come on in this very live stream. Perhaps that beanie is a little too tight, old man. It's cutting off the very little oxygenated blood you have left. <laughs> all I hear, all I read in that whole comment is, I got to make excuse not to talk to him. I got to make excuse not to talk to him. That's yep. it. I'm making excuses not to talk to you? By talking to you and asking you to provide a model that I agreed to discuss? How does that make sense to you? 
Oh, wait, you thought conspiracy theory means the people that believe in a conspiracy are the ones conspiring. Never mind. Like I said, you provide for me something to debunk, I'll put it in the debunking conspiracy theorist series. I'm a man of my word. It's okay. I understand that you're not able to debate or have just or just have a conversation with me. I know what's going on. I'm not just some flurf as you call it. If you have ever seen me in debates, you will know why the Globe Defenders are scared of debating me. Do you all remember that he attempted to suggest that he wasn't looking for a debate, but a conversation? I wonder why he would suggest people are afraid of debating him. <laughs> Let people talk long enough, they'll tell on themselves every single time. There we go. And then this is your response to me. So this is the issue I have with this. You insult flat earthers and play blah, blah, blah. He says, <laughs> I am not playing victim. Your insulting of me does not bother me. Oh, it clearly does. I clearly stated that this is why I wouldn't be interested in a conversation with you. So he just contradicted himself. It doesn't bother him. But this is the reason why he won't have a conversation. That is not a contradiction, you fucking muppet. Continue reading for fuck's sake. This is that stop and pause before you get the entire context thing that I said you would do. And lo and behold, what I said was in response to the claim that I'm playing victim, you idiot. Slow down and read it again. It would be fruitless exercise if the point call me out to be like, you're wrong, I'm correct, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> I want you all to notice that he not only laughs, but he mumbles through the explanation I gave for declining his debate request. He claimed I was playing the victim, which of course is something that never happened. So I explained that the decline in the request was because it would be a pointless endeavor and that he could call me what he liked. These people just make up whatever they want to believe is actually quite impressive. He says, it's okay. I understand that you're not able to debate or just have a conversation with me. I know what's going on. He says, reverse psychology works on ch children and adults with low IQs, both of which I am not. I, 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 I don't know. I'm falling under the, under the, um, how can I put it? The idea that you might not have as much IQ as you claim to have. Coming from a flurf, that really, really means nothing at all. And you probably shouldn't be so sure of things for which you have no evidence. You know, like how you are so sure the earth is flat? While I never claim to be the smartest guy on earth, my IQ is clearly not in question. Better luck with the next guy, though. Then he says, I would have known you even made a video of me. One of my subscribers mentioned your name, which I had to dig up, dig deep to even find. You know, that's a lie. Because I literally tagged him in that stream. Mm. That's how he knew about me. That's just not true. Here's the comment. I wasn't aware of any tags as I do not get notified of tags on YouTube. Perhaps you do as you're a smaller creator. I am inundated with thousands of comments and likes just on my YouTube channel alone. If you think I'm being notified of tags, I've got an oceanfront property in Death Valley that you might be interested in. I literally had to search for that first video. That's a fact. I routinely make videos and responses to people orders of magnitude larger than you with far more vitriotic fan bases. So this is his problem. He doesn't want to actually engage because my subscribers isn't enough for him. <laughs> wow. Nice. All channel, cool. big ego. Arrogant, man. I think you are all starting to understand why this man is a flurf. He cannot comprehend basic logic. He said and continues to say, I'm afraid of debating him. I respond that I routinely make videos on people that are more dangerous to go after. And this fucking idiot thinks I'm saying he's not big enough. <laughs> really? So is that why I responded to four YouTubers that made videos on me and all of them had less than 1000 subscribers? It's not a matter of you not being big enough, you dolt. I'm explaining to you that you do not frighten me. You called me a coward, you human smegma nugget. I'm responding to that claim. I literally quoted your words. What the fuck did you think I quoted your words for? My health? Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in other words, because my subscriber base isn't large enough for him, he doesn't want to engage. You know what that means, guys? That means he's afraid to give my channel exposure. Mm -hmm. 
And there you have it, folks. He admits what he's really after. Exposure. Well, you got it, buddy. Only it's not going to go the way you think it is. Because when Birdman makes a video on you, you done fucked up. He's scared to death. Mm-hmm. So he gets a decision. You're not frightening me. And what's the next thing he says after that? <laughs> you do not frighten me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's exactly, it's exactly what he does, dude, because you wouldn't have had to write that otherwise, dude. So another member of the peanut gallery has decided to give his two pesos. And just like the host, we have another dumbass. Surprise, surprise. This one says that telling someone who says you're afraid of them, that you're not afraid of them, means you're afraid of them. What kind of preschool logic is this? If anyone was doubting why I declined a debate with this moron and his band of merry men, I'm sure that doubt has been assuaged. Keep in mind, I saw them behave exactly like this already. And then he says, you have, you just have nothing to offer here. You don't even have a model. Psst, Cavendish <laughs> isn't even a hypothesis, is useless to me. I gain nothing from conservatism. Again, Cavendish, <coughs> it's not a hypothesis because Cavendish is claimed to be an experiment. Experiment and hypothesis are two different things. He still doesn't realize I'm repeating his own words back at him, complete with quotations and everything. You can't make this up. He says, maths and science do not require belief, simply understanding. We can demonstrate that which we claim. I do not believe these things. I accept the reality of them as they if. What efficacy can be routinely shown. Is that so? Yeah, but I'm a little confused at the bravado on display here. You barely could pronounce efficacy, so I highly doubt you know what that word even means to ask me, is that so? Like, how are you acting confident right now? You don't even know what that word means. What has this got to do with anything I asked about there? I just want to have a conversation to see why he believes what he believes. Well, you see... You said you find what I believe to be interesting, which we know was a lie and you were attempting to bait me into a debate, Flurf. So I stated that I don't believe these things as belief means you don't have evidence. You ought to know that being a religious nut. Why is it this difficult for you to keep up with the conversation? This ought to be a case study. Well, he's, he's not going to accept anything you say anyway. He just, that's what that last statement just said. It's like, no matter what you demonstrate or show him, or tell him he's not going to change his mind. He's already accepted exactly. No, thing number two. That's precisely the opposite of my position on anything. I will change my mind based on evidence. It's like my entire thing. The problem, of course, is that you people deny reality. You don't have anything that usurps reality because if you did, it would be reality. This is why your leader refuses to give me a model and why I'm asking for one. The fucking balls you have to have to suggest I don't want to engage when I asked this man multiple times and he refused to acquiesce to my request. Uh, anyway, he says, if you ever change, if I ever change, he says, I can assure you that I've ne that I will never email you. Like I said, if you want further discussion, make a proper video response to my work and or present me with a model that I can subject to scrutiny. It's fine. The Hebrew, the Hebrew biblical cosmology. There's the model you want. Uh, more than happy. Yeah. Notice I said, subject to scrutiny. Say, Flatzoid, how do you suppose I test for the heavens and the underworld? You have a way that I can view those places, you fucking clown? No? Okay then, provide for me a falsifiable flat earth model. Stupid. How? I mean, come on, this guy's just full of himself, dude. He won't, answer, he won't answer an email, but he'll answer a video. That's, yeah. I'll give him content. Then, but look at the, But remember, he says he won't uh, respond to me, but he wants me to do something. How, how does that make sense? I'm almost at my limit for the amount of stupidity I can take in a single sitting, guys. I can completely understand why you're a flurf. Your teacher's attempting to educate you on any subject has to have been a Herculean task. You just asked, how does... If this, then that works. I say I have no interest in emailing you, but if you want further engagement, these are my criteria. So not only does this disprove the idea that I'm afraid of this donut, I'm giving him a way to gain what he desperately wants, my attention. 
Give me a model or a proper response. How is this that hard to comprehend? Yeah, well, he doesn't want you to do an email because, because there's no content in an email so as much as you making a video. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see lesbian John Voigt has decided to chime in, and to no one's surprise, it's another shit take. He says, I don't want to email this guy because there's no content in it. First of all, I don't talk to anyone privately. I prefer my comments towards anyone, especially people I don't know, to be public and searchable. Second, I'm clearly engaging with this moron in his own comment section. If content was all I were after, I could have not said anything and simply made a video response. I'm good at this shit. I've been doing it for almost 10 years. Third, this fucking dude is a nobody. It wouldn't be content because he's in it. It would be content because I made it. I made a whole ass video talking about the color red and it's gotten nearly triple the views of Flatzoid's most popular video. The point is, I can make a video about anything. I've earned that. It's not about content to me. It's about, do I have something to say? You guys know clearly fuck all about me, but you speak as if you've known me for years. But anyway, he says, is there any particular reason you cannot do number two, lol? Wow. It says, bless you, man. Wish you all the best. I wish you all the best too. Peace. Okay. So then this is all right, Tim. Notice the arrogant and full of himself Birdman was being polite and wishing Flatzoid the best and peace, but how none of them acknowledge my actual behavior, only their perceived notions that Flatty McFlats injected into this conversation. I was nothing but nice and cordial, calmly explaining my reasoning, but somehow I'm arrogant and full of myself because I said I don't respect the idea that the Earth is flat and that every space agency on Earth is lying to everyone and that every pilot is lying to everyone and that satellite engineers are lying to everyone and that gravity doesn't exist and that there is no space and that the moon is a projection and not a solid object and that there is a giant ice wall that NASA won't let you go to and that... This is what he says flat to its perspective i noticed you deleted my comment towards michael khan so i'll write it again and screenshot it this time to prove how dishonest you people are hmm by the way guys i never deleted his comment i don't know what comment he's talking about you are a liar michael also says he never got a um a notification about that comment no, no he's not about it's, it's elusive as a duffy email so yeah yeah so if michael didn't get a, a notification for that i didn't delete anything who's the one being dishonest that would be you you slimy lying piece of shit. here's the screenshot i wrote this comment twice and he deleted it twice because i took a jab at one of his lunatic supporters in this same thread he's admitted to deleting multiple comments because an anti-flat earther has been calling him out which he dubs trolling so when michael was trolling me that was okay because he's on your side right and look let's be clear deleting comments he doesn't want on his channel that's his right but it's the lying about it that's making me laugh. I very obviously responded to his friend, as Michael is his friend and a fellow moron flat earther. He didn't like it, so he deleted it. I don't know why he's doubling down on this lie, though. Just say you didn't like the comment and we could have moved on. It's not that big a deal. But I definitely wrote two separate comments that are mysteriously gone. And you can't bullshit me because I'm a YouTuber that's been doing this for much longer than you. And I know how comments work. I said, Birdman, did I? Where? What did it say? Maybe it had a word in that triggers the comment type. Because I don't know. Well, I don't know. Like, that love could be possible. <laughs> I swear, I wouldn't have made a fuss about this if this dude would have just said he didn't like what I said to his friend, but it's the feigning of ignorance for me. Like, who are you trying to fool? This comment has nothing in it that YouTube would flag, so we know they didn't delete it. Here, I'll prove it. I wrote the exact same comment on one of my own videos, and wouldn't you know it, it's still up on my channel days later. Hmm... Why didn't YouTube delete it from my channel? A second explanation is that you have certain words flagged, like flurf, 
as that's the only unusual word in that relatively tame couple of sentences. YouTube allows creators to filter out certain words, but the problem is those words end up in the held for review section in YouTube studio. They don't just disappear. You would have the ability to check that section and approve the comment. But we know you don't have Flurf flagged as there are two comments on that video with the word Flurf. So the only other explanation is that you deleted my comment twice. Why are we lying about this? You don't have a reputation to maintain. Nobody knows you. So Michael says to him, YouTube messes with comments. If Birdman replied to me, I would have had a notification if you, even if you deleted the comment. Now to the Birdman. Flats doesn't need to remove comments directed to me. He knows I can fully deal with anything put to me. Uh, that's true. Yeah. I wonder if the person that would say this to me would have any interest in lying about this situation. You know, a paying supporter of Flatzoid that runs his own barely has a pulse flurf channel. These people are Looney Tunes. I respond to this clown and Flatzoid didn't like it and he deleted it. Only I screenshot the second time and just explain to everyone how YouTube comments actually work. Who are you really going to believe? So that's the end of the beginning of this live stream and they finally dig into my Jamar debunk. Like I said, there is a timeline in which I respond to this whole thing. I'm just currently doing something flurfs never do. Having a wonderful life. Until next time. You lose.